All right, and welcome to this episode number 18 of the episodes. And um, this one is going to be a really amazing one um, because we got subsurface scattering implemented by Clement. So, first of all, I'm just going to show you how to set, start using it, really basic, and then jump into a test, test scene. Uh, so let's take a look at the Blender. So I'm using the build form 14th of November. Uh, so let's just delete the cube and add uh, a Suzanne monkey. So I'm just smooth smoothing it out a bit. Um, we need to add a light, a point light. So I'm going to place it kind of behind uh, the monkey head so we get uh, this kind of back lighting. Uh, increase the energy or maybe even more. Okay, that, okay. Uh, and now let's take a look at subsurface scattering. So as you guess, first of all you have to look at the material. So let's add a new material and use the subsurface scattering shader. And uh, we can change the skin tone to a bit more, yeah, like human skin. That is good enough. But um, as you can see, it's kind of diffuse, or it really is diffuse. There's no subsurface scattering going on yet. And so first of all, you have to check down here, like with the transparent materials and stuff like that. You have in, in under options. You have screen space subsurface scattering, so let's turn that on. And still nothing happens, so you have to jump into the render tab and enable subsurface scattering. And boom, something happens. We got this like really volumetrical looking thing. <laughs> so then you have to jump back to materials, and uh, basically, as I understand it. Uh, this is the scale of the subsurface scattering uh, going on in the mesh. So this is the like the radio scale. So if we decrease this one to a smaller value, we get something more correctly. Or maybe that was too small. No. Oh. Okay, let's have it at 0 0.05. And. Um, so this is the like the general scattering scale when a light ray hits a surface, uh, and then this uh, like this vector tree input we got here is uh, indirectly changed by this uh, scale. So think it of like we have this general scale, and it's totally uniform now the scattering, and I think of this as like RGB. So if I want to boost the R, the red channel, I can just give it a larger radius compared to the green and blue channel and uh, then we get something like this that looks more like skin or wax uh, and the same goes if you want to boost like blue you can uh, increase that one or you could like increase blue and red uh, which is something you would like to do for a more advanced uh, human skin shader um, so yeah, that's really cool and um, if you look at this ear, you can see that there's some kind of like bandings. Uh, so let's jump into render and if we increase the samples, that goes away. And one more important thing is to like with the light sources, you should really enable shadow and contact shadow. So if we, if we take a look here where the ear occludes the light source. If I remove contact shadow, we get this like, um, it doesn't look realistic compared to where the light is coming from. And when we enable it, we get more realistic uh, shadowing of this part, but also the, like, the subsurface scanning effect kind of extends with the shadow. So yeah, that is really cool and it deserves one of these. <laughs> so thank you very much, Clement. This is amazing. Um, to have in real time and it's super super fast 
let's jump back to Blender and I'm gonna open up uh, one of my test scenes. So let's jump out of this. So this uh, I have this model which is uh, like a head scan that's uh, distributed on, on the internet. I totally forgot who is distributing it but I would kind of like to say NVIDIA. I might be wrong. But um, yeah, Google for free head scans and uh, you get this one which is like really high poly and then you get um, textures um, albedo and normal. But as you can see it looks really amazing and it's really fast. If you like kind of look at his nose now when we're looking straight onto this um, or like facing the faces, <laughs> the forward facing faces. You don't see the subsurface scattering effect that much, but if you start to rotate and uh, when the like the light uh, bounces perpendicular to where we're looking, you can kind of see the subsurface scattering effect uh, really into play comes into play, and it looks really good. And it also seems to be um, like the further away you are, the less uh, effect it has. So. Um, yeah, and if, if you look at his ears, actually if we had this uh, like really bright light source behind him, which you would have, um, if this was rendered offline with cycles, you, the light path would go through his ears and uh, they would kind of glow reddish. Um, so that's not happening and uh, I asked Clement about that in a mail, about translucence in subsurface gathering through a thin surface. And this is his reply. It's not there yet. I'm looking into it, but I don't know if it'd be doable. Uh, in parentheses, I don't even know if Unreal does it when using the subsurface scattering. And like, I don't think it does either. I've been watching some of the videos from Epic about their new, like, super realistic uh, skin, uh, hair, and uh, like their eye shader and stuff like that. But I don't think actually they even have it. The main showstopper is that when we're using exponential shadow map that does not correctly represent the surface to the occluder, so heavy light bleeding incorrect transmission would occur. But um, for me, this is not really a showstopper. I mean, this is so, so incredibly uh, far advanced compared to what we ever had in Blender to show subsurface scattering in real time. So, like this transmission through thin surfaces is not a showstopper for me. If I would like to have it, I would like offline render this with cycles. But if this was uh, like a character for a game engine, this is just amazing to be able to show show it like this in real time. Uh, I also asked him, as far as I understand, Gaussian falloff behaves better than Christian Burley as a blur method is implemented for the moment. Well, Gaussian was easier to implement first, but I'm looking at implementing Christian Burley right now. There might be a few bias, though, because in the real-time subsurface scattering, implementation requires that the diffuse color is constant, while Burley's compute the uh, subsurface scattering transmission for with diffuse the diffuse color of each sample. So that was <coughs> a bit over my head technically, but uh, yeah, I kind of noticed also that it doesn't matter if I'm using Christensen Burley or Gaussian. So if we look at the head here, and if I change the fall of to Gaussian, I don't see any difference. So it's not implemented yet. Um, but anyways, this is super, super amazing. Um, let's take a look at the shader. So you can either pause here, but I'm probably gonna make a print screen. I'm gonna sort it a bit better and leave it in the description below so you can create this skin shader if you want to. But what I basically has here is like a specular input um, with a default value of 0 0.5. So this one is multiplied with two. So whatever, if you have default 0 0.5, the output will become one, which is like the default. Uh, I have a Fresnel input, which I'm multiplying with whatever specular value I have. And this controls the, this is just a basic, basic diffuse and glossy mix uh, of these two shaders. 
and then I have this subsurface scattering. And uh, I mix that one also with the the friend uh, the specular. So I'm using actually the glossier for the, these two, and for that two, or those two. Um, and these three guys are just the input texture, so I can put them kind of away the albedo and normal. But but it, why I do this is um, because I want to mix them, uh, so I can have like um, just purely a diffuse version and uh, one that's 100% uh, uh, subsurface scattering. So if I jump out here, we can have a look at it. If I put this as zero, like now it's diffuse only. Um, and you can see it's not super, super good looking. Doesn't look realistic. And if I put it at one, we have only the subsurface scattering which can be a bit over the top because it takes away almost all the details so like a value of uh, 0 0.8 or 0 0.75 now we have 75% subsurface scattering and 25% diffuse so a bit of the details is, details is coming back um, and if I would, were to like really well really boost this um, scattering radius to like 0 0.2 you can see that it becomes almost like waxy looking um, and now we can take a look at like the specular if I put it at 0 we have no specular so you can see the rim lighting goes away and stuff like that or the reflection of the rim light uh, I think like a value of 0 0.2 is more realistic um, let me just change back the scattering radius. Uh, Alright, what is happening? Yeah, so I, th I think I had like um, 0 0.2 but I need to be at like 0 0.007 so yeah now, now if we like remove the specular you can see like that the default of 0 0.5 is a bit too much we can just tune it back but anyway I'm gonna show you this um, shady tree it's very 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 simple for a more realistic one you would like to get this like epidermis and uh, subdermis or what they're called like the layers of the skin so in theory, you, you just take the, um, uh, the albedo color and you can overlay it with like a blue one and a red one and then uh, use two layers of subsurface scattering with different uh, scattering radius. But anyway, I think this is uh, good enough for this video. Um, it's really, really good looking this um, subsurface scattering. Don't forget to change with the lightings to use contact shadow because uh, without it, it doesn't look really that good. Or, or it's kind of okay, but with it, it's more um, realistic. You get this uh, subsurface scattering effect in the shadows. So, yeah, that was everything for today. Once again, thank you so much, Clement, for implementing this. Uh, EV is moving forward uh, really fast again and uh, I can't wait for 2.8 um, I can't wait until we have um, the dependency graph uh, in so we can get all the modifiers and stuff like that but yeah it's better that Sergey gets his time to implement it correctly than just hastily putting it in there and we're it's gonna break everything and stuff like that so for now it's okay just to do this like uh, small uh, look dev test uh, but um, as soon as we have the dependency graph I will probably start trying to use it to make characters and stuff like that so yeah that was everything for this episode and as usually happy blending take care goodbye <laughs>